leading in a compassionate and inclusive way is being focused on people. And that might sound really trite and straightforward. It's actually very important in social care more than in health, I think, although I think this is starting to permeate into the health sector. We talk a lot about person-centred care. Or actually, I think I pre pre prefer to use the, the terminology relationship-based care. And that's about recognising that the people who need our care and support, whether that is social care, health care, or support with housing, anything really that's about making people's lives good lives, then that needs to be on a, a, a relationship of equality, that we are working alongside people, we are listening to what they need and what they can contribute. And so the same goes for our colleagues. And, um, looking for people's strengths, looking for what they can do and then asking the question that we heard about this morning, how can I help? How can I help you develop? How can I help you manage that thing that seems difficult? How can I help you because you've had a really difficult day? For me, that's what inclusive and compassionate leadership is all about. It's easy, isn't it, when we're talking about culture and, and how we make compassionate and inclusive leadership a reality to start getting into sort of jargon and sound bites and for people to get a bit frustrated because they hear people trotting out things that sound wonderful and that's not their lived experience every day so it's really important we do make this practical and about our practice so one of the things you need to do I think is to keep checking in how am I doing I'm, I'm in a new role um, and change is difficult for people and I've been very very warmly welcomed in my new role which is wonderful and I also understand that my colleagues are probably feeling a little nervous what am I going to do am I going to start suggesting all sorts of changes so it's really important that I keep checking in with them how am I doing am I giving you the right support are, are you happy with the direction I'm suggesting am I paying enough attention to the right things am I getting the messaging right and I need to continue to do that throughout my time with the hospice, not just in these first three, six months. That needs to be who I am and how I am. And it's, you know, sometimes we talk about it being the small things. They're not small things, they're really important things. Taking time to say hello and ask somebody genuinely, how are you? Not that quick, how are you? Please don't tell me how you are because I don't really want to know you know, stop. And if somebody says, well, actually, I'm having a bad day, or yeah, if things aren't so great, take the time, because uh, that time will be repaid. So I think um, the social care sector, the third or voluntary sector, and the healthcare sector all have things to learn from each other. Um, sometimes I think we see things too binary, so it's about, you know, what, what can we learn from you, or which is best. It's not about that. We all have things to contribute. I do think one of the things that the social care sector and the voluntary sector are more intrinsic um, about is involvement and engagement, which is not to say it's perfect. Far from it. There's still much to be done in both those sectors to genuinely engage our fellow citizens in everything we do. I think we're further travelled down that road than our colleagues in health and we're, we're very open to sharing. I'm both a chief executive and also a trustee of two other organisations, so I sit both sides of the table and see and I think it's my role as Chief Executive to be the accountable officer. I can only do that through compassionate and inclusive leadership. And I expect that also from the chair of my board of trustees. I expect that of myself as a trustee. And I think if we all take our starting and our central point as the person or the people that we're providing care and support in whatever capacity that is to, and all of our decisions go back to, is this what that person has told us they want and need? We won't go far wrong. My leadership must do is to continue to grow as a leader. Uh, there, this is a never ending journey and I learn things every day. I learn things from my colleagues. I'm also a coach. I learn from the people I coach and then I share that learning so that we all continue to grow and develop. 
I think um, being really focused, what are we here to do, so being really clear about the purpose of the organisation, our shared objectives, our shared values, and I think um, modelling. It's so important as leaders that we understand people are watching and listening to everything we do and say, so we have an amazing capacity to influence for good or not. King's Fund is really well placed because you are so highly respected because of the fantastic work you do. You have reach, um, you are listened to by people in positions of power and my plea to you would be please use that to focus on the whole of the health, social care and voluntary sector, which I think you're getting much better at, may I say, um, and, and listen to what our experience every day is and, and use your huge skills and talents to put that into the brilliant reports you provide and events like this that bring people together and your ability to influence policymakers.